Welcome to the kitchen. Today I'm going to be talking about reverse polarity protection, adding a diode to your build. Um, <clears throat> I had unexpected company one day and I showed them my bad idea project and that runs off 12 volts. I plugged it into my brick power supply that I made. I plugged it into the 12 volts, you know, and then later on I had brought my Dynacomp in there. I was going to change the value of the resistor because the LED was too bright. I'd use an ultra bright LED. So I cut a like a 15k resistor in there. <clears throat> and then I went to test the pedal before I brought it back and put it in my pedal board. And I slammed it with the 12 volts. So I fried a CA3080 chip, which is for me, I would consider it a rare chip. Cost me, I don't know, it was not cheap. It was like 10 bucks to buy the chip in the first place. So I had to get another chip. And I found a little bit more affordable, like an LM3080, and I bought two of those. Something with the shipping, it ended up costing me a lot of money. So you have to look, you know, the pedal that you built or you're going to build, it may already have a diode in the circuit that is there for polarity protection. You got to kind of kind of know a little bit of what you're doing. Uh, one way to tell is if it has three diodes, <laughs> one of those might be for polarity protection. Or, you know, I mean, look at the schematic. If the diode is in, <clears throat> in series, with coming in right away with the positive, yeah, that's probably what it is. Uh, now, there's a few different ways that you can do this. And the way I'm doing it today is an afterthought. I've built some pedals that they don't have any polarity protection. I'm going for, like, the easiest method possible where I just disconnect the positive wire that's coming on the input jack where you plug the adapter in, the 9 volts, remove the positive, unsolder that, and then insert a diode. Um, RG Keen has a page that you could take a look at, he uses uh, MOSFETs. There's, there's different ways of doing this. Um, I was looking at, you know, series or parallel, like if you do it parallel, it's a good idea to have a fuse involved. Um, in my case, that's not going to work. If you don't use a fuse and you just cut it in parallel, what will happen is the diode can fry, it'll pop out, and then that would leave the circuit open. Uh, so the bad reverse voltage would go and continue to damage the circuit. So what, I, what I'm thinking, um, not knowing any better, is just cut, cut one in on the positive and hope for the best. That way, if I do plug the wrong polarity adapter into the circuit, it just won't work. Um, a lot of my setups have LED indicators on the power supply, so I would know right away, you know. Uh, if I don't know, yeah, would either some of them have fuses. Um, Worst case scenario is plug it in, turn it on, and then hit the switch, and you see that there's no light. Whoa, rip the, you know, rip the thing out. So the point is, is that with this diode in here, it's better than not having the diode. It's going to buy me a few seconds uh, to be able to determine that something's not right here. Um, I did blow up that compressor pedal, slamming it with the 12 volts. Um, I blew up an EQ module. <laughs> I had ordered from eBay, uh, you can find these for bass guitar or harness, and it's got a gooped circuit with uh, some pots coming out of it, bass treble, mid-range volume, and I was going to cut that into a chassis. Well, it was kind of a small chassis. I put the jacks on the, on the back side of the chassis, put the jacks back here, and the way I drilled it out, there wasn't room for a full-size 2.1 jack like you see here. I used a small inline style that would normally have a cable with a plastic sheath. And that's a the metal ground, it's grounded, so if I would have went with uh, normal positive ground, or I call it reverse polarity, there would have been a, a conflict with the ground there. So I had to reverse the polarity on that pedal. And, I mean, this whole thing was a bad idea. And in doing so, I accidentally plugged it into a reverse polarity pedal, and I blew it. So... I, I've blown, I've already blown up too, <laughs> and I figure now at this point it's a good idea for me to assess the pedals that I have and which ones would be most susceptible to circuit fa component failure or damage, circuit damage by applying reverse polarity and then go ahead and install these diodes in those circuits. So, you know, really if you think about it, if you're careful, if you've got your act together, maybe you have a professional, like a power brick, like the Voodoo Labs pedal power or something like that. Maybe you don't need to worry about this, but if you're like me, you're kind of disorganized, you're a slob, you're a goof, you're a hack like me, well, you might want to think about adding a polarity protection diode to the circuit. Now, I guess I could start by talking about the diode itself. This component 
It looks like a resistor. You have different styles. Mostly they recommend a 1N4001 or the 4000 series. Anything 4000, you know, 1 up to 4007 maybe. I might be wrong about that. Don't quote me about that. I know the, four, the low 4000s are usually what people use. I also read that the Shockey diode, it's a 1N5818, 1N5819. Those are good too. Um, when you look at the diode, you know, like I said, it looks something like a resistor. Um, this one, the packaging is black plastic. There's a silver stripe on one side, and what that's telling me is that the electricity is going to, the current is going to be able to flow this one direction. Uh, it's not going to work going the other way. It's, the effect of this is, is it's going to be like a shunt. It's going to stop. It's not going to, electricity is not going to pass through the circuit the wrong way, which would probably be bad for the power adapter. Um, I can show you a test a little later if I feel like hooking it up, but I'll tell you what happens. I have a multi-adapter here, the kind that you can, you know, click, 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 set the voltage on it and the polarity, reverse polarity. With that diode in place on the circuit, if you reverse polarity it and you plug the, plug the adapter in, the LED on the unit, it doesn't light up. Just a little bit. You can see it's going, ah, and there are the LEDs. Stop it. You're killing me. So, because uh, it's, I guess the effect is almost like just shorting it, you know. So you would know right away if you did have an LED indicator on your power supply. But for me, this is, you know, blowing up a power supply is a lot better than blowing up a pedal, I think, in my case. Um, unless it was like my one spot. <laughs> or the boss. I like those boss ones. They're always nice and quiet. So uh, what I did was... <clears throat> I'll show you here. I'm going to move the camera a little bit. You can hear my neighbor kids are having a party upstairs. Okay, so here's what I have. I, I thought for the test I would run a couple of different pedals. So I did try, this is a factory defuzz, which is a lower, uh, when you put the meter on it and check the, the milliamps, the, uh, I can't think of the word, when you check the, the draw, how much power it's using, it's like 10 milliamps. This flanger was more, it's like uh, 20, you know, with the flanger because it's digital. So I've got, this is a um, quick and dirty test oscillator. This just produces uh, tone. It's like, uh, you know, you could think of it like a keyboard just hitting an, uh, an A or something. I'll be coming out of here, going into the flanger, and then over here I have a noisy cricket. Now this probably seems like overkill, but I wanted to pass audio through the circuit because I was going to be measuring the current draw and see does it matter uh, whether you know is it gonna is it gonna use a little more power when there's audio passing through it or let's say I turn the volume down and it's just idling is is that number gonna go up and sure enough it did it was a minuscule amount 0 0.01 of a volt but uh, I was correct and you know the running the mini amp here that was just well, the thing was out on the table, so I went ahead and connected it. So what I did, I have one meter that was set up to measure the voltage, and this was post, uh, post diode. So the power comes in, runs through the diode, and then I'm measuring the voltage after the diode. And I also have a second meter here that was measuring the milliamps or the current draw. So I could get an idea of both facets of uh, measurement, measuring the volts and the current, and when measuring for current, you have to set the mirror, the meter up in series. So it's kind of like the voltage is passing through the meter. Um, you don't put it in parallel like with a normal meter. You take the probes and you put one on plus and one on minus. This is a little different. You would have your your minus would be down here and the plus would go in and then out, you know, black and then red respectively. That's how you measure current. It's a little different. Anyway, I set up some alligator clips, and what I did, I tested four different diodes. We have the 4001, 1N4007, uh, 1N5819, and a 1N5818, the shaft keys. And <clears throat> I tried two, I tried, ran this test on two different pedals with three different adapters. I used the one spot, a uh, zoom adapter that was 9 volts, 300, 200 milliamps on the chassis, and then a Digitech, which is 9.6 volts, 300 milliamps. I tested all of these configurations with no diode and then with the diode in place. 
And the whole reason I had ordered these 5818 or the 5819 was I had read some someone was asking about, well, what diode is the smartest one to use if I'm concerned about how much voltage I'm going to lose. Whenever you use a diode, it has a voltage drop. I'm not sure if that's the proper term that I'm talking about, but when the volt, when the diode is in the, in the in line with the circuit, it's like a resistor to it. It reduces the current flow, which is one of the uh, <coughs> excuse me one of the one of the downsides of this method. I'm supposed if you want to really get full voltage, you could look into R.G. Keene's method with the MOSFET design, um, which is probably a much better way of doing it. At this point, like I said, this is an afterthought. I'm just chopping something in real quick and easy on a few pedals. So the findings of my little survey, all of my numbers here, what I found was the most efficient diode or the diodes that had the, the least effect on reducing the current was the 5818. Uh, the 5819 was very close. I mean, we're talking 0.01 of a volt. Um, also, it seemed like in these instances where <clears throat> between all testing all of them with the numbers, when you look at it, if a particular diode drops a little less voltage, it will drop a little more of the milliamps. It's like you don't get nothing for free with this. However, it varies from diode to diode. If it goes up on one end, it goes down on the other. The ends being the amps versus the volts. So I guess that would be a basic principle of electronics, but uh, way above my pay grade, to quote the great pink cherry photon. Anyway, the numbers... With like the Digitech adapter, that's 9.6 volts. When I ran that with no diode, <clears throat> it was running at 9.62 volts. Then when I chopped in the 4001, it reduced it to 8.97 volts. So that's, you know, 0.65 volt. When I subbed in the... 5818, as opposed to 8.97 volts, it was 9.36. And the difference being from 9.62 to 9.36, what do we got? 26 versus 0.26 versus 0.65. So it's a quarter of a volt versus 0.65 of a volt difference. The 0.65, the more power hungry diode, is the 4001. The 4007 ran a little bit, that was a little bit uh, more of a power hog. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, it wasn't. It's was a little bit less, the 4007. It's an 8.66 versus 8.71 using the one spot. But I tried, like I said, I tried this with both pedals uh, to pick a random number for the zoom adapter, which ran at 11.41 volts on the factory defuzz. With the 4001, I was at 10.80. <clears throat> And the 5819, 11.17 <clears throat> volts. So if you were concerned about maximum voltage, I know that you always see the 4001 diode um, used for this application. So I'm really curious. Why is it that people aren't using this 5818, 5819? Maybe somebody out there could answer this question. If one of you smart guys watches one of my videos, let me know why you think that would be. Why why not use the one that drops like less than half of the voltage? I mean, 0.65 versus 0.26. It's nothing to shake your stick at. <laughs> now, you know, once again, 
I could get really carried away with this and like start thinking about it. Like, well, I'm daisy chaining a lot of pedals, so what's more important, the volts or the amperage? Let me use the diode that reduces the amperage the most because I'm more worried about my amperage. But I'm not going to get that carried away with it. Um, I'm going to open up these pedals, chop in the diode, and test them out, make sure they work. I'll let you know um, what you need to do if you're going to take this advice and do this. When you add the diode, there'll be a line, a little line on the diode that shows you which way you're supposed to cut it in. And how it works is you, let's say our, let's say our, our jack is here and we're going to remove the wire. Well, you want to put that diode in so the wire side is connecting where the stripe is on the diode. The non-stripe end, which is, I think it's the cathode, goes to the jack. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut them in on the positive line. So um, I can go ahead and cut this in and show you. I don't know how exciting it's going to be um, to see the diode sitting on the jack. So I think I'm going to skip that part of it. You'll just have to take my word for it. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to be cutting them in. And if anybody has any comments about oh, this is the wrong way uh, or, you know, there's a better way to do it, I would love to hear it. And I appreciate your views. If you uh, would like to thumbs up me and subscribe, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to kind of drum up a little bit of activity around my channel. I've got some more exciting stuff coming up, some pedal demos, and pretty much whatever I run into, I'm going to try to be a little better about documenting uh, my little projects here. I do I do a lot of stuff that doesn't get found just because it's... Uh, it's a hassle. <laughs> anyway, taking it up enough of your time. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate your views. Good luck to everything you do. I want to give a special hey, shout out to a couple of my buddies. Pink Jimmy Photon, Chromosphere Paul, have you seen him, Mike? And everybody else at the forum, I appreciate you guys putting up with me. And all the best to you guys. May your circuits come up good the first time. Keep on hacking.